If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this exciting episode. Ooh, excite. Of the Mind Pump. I put the in front of it. Yeah, I, sound I, the Mind Pumpers. The Mind the Pump. The Mind Pumper. Uh, in the first 41 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We mention uh, Organifi's new Mind Pump page with very handsome pictures of... Yeah, uh, your hosts here at Mind Pump. We your, made it. Your favorite hosts. Yeah, uh, we we are sponsored by Organifi. I do want to mention that if you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump, first of all, you'll see the picture I'm talking about. You'll also get twenty percent off for using the code Mind Pump. It's twenty percent off. I don't know is that big of a discount. <sighs> More than you thought. We talk about Adams Dawson Creek. Doppeldinger, <laughs> <laughs> little cherub-looking guy on there. Kinda yeah, he's got a nice baby face. Looks like Adam when he was a kid. Yeah. We talk about Butcher Box's bacon bonanza. Oh, that's a lot of bees, dude. dude. Dude, dude, free bacon for life. For life. Have you guys? I almost want to get mind? that tattoo. Are you out of your mind? Have you lost yeah. your mind? Are you out of your mind? It reminds me of those uh, bacon like, for life. You know, it reminds me of those commercials on uh, like uh, those used car commercials, those old ones. Like, if you buy a car, I'll leave yeah. my hat. Or <laughs> my mind is blowing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll so, give you free bacon for life. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you will get the free bacon for life and ten dollars off your first order and free shipping. Damn. Then we get a little somber. We talk about Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade. Uh, terrible losses. Very sad. Very, very terrible losses. So we talk about that a little bit. We talk about finding purpose outside of material success. And then we get into the questions. The first question was, you know, this was a kind of a controversial one. Do we think bodybuilding and just training in the gym is for people who just suck at sports. That's why they do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just think it's hilarious. Justin had, <laughs> Justin had fun with that. You felt one. that way. That's why, yes. you asshole. I checked myself, though. You did. You, you did. guys can listen. You called yourself out. The next question was What are the best exercises for poor posture, like forward children? Now, we gave some advice using bands for uh, exercises uh, to help this. A really, really uh, successful because you want to do them frequently. We'll also make sure that Jackie links in the show notes the YouTube video that you sent over to me, and then I'm going to forward to her. Right yes, now. yes. And now Rubber Bandits Boom. is the bands that we like to recommend people get to or 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 buy because they're, they're high the quality. best quality out there. Now here's the deal: you can get Rubber Bandits from our website. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Here's what you do: you go to mindpumpmedia.com, go click under apparel. Go to apparel and then scroll to the bottom and then you'll see the uh, rubber band. Hopefully you find an oracle that will guide you. That's right. And then <laughs> from there, you'll make it to more an oracle, yeah. yeah. Give him a gold coin. Good or luck. Somewhere. He'll take you across the... Uh, On the, your quest. Oh, the God. next question was, uh, for someone who's training for OCR, obstacle course races like Spartan, what's the optimal way to work out or program your training? We talk about MAPS performance a lot in this part of this episode because MAPS performance was literally designed for people who are looking for this kind of performance. The next question was, why should this person buy MAPS split when up until now we've been talking shit about split routines? <laughs> kind of true, but yeah. we explain ourselves in that mm, part of this episode. They called us out. Finally, this person wants to be a personal trainer, but they're a total introvert. Should they be trainers or should they stay at home and surf the internet? It must have, you know, <laughs> taken them a lot to ask that question. Also, uh, dude, there's only two days left. Yeah. Two days left for the $50 off of our new program, Maps Split. So if you go to mapssplit.com and enter the code SPLIT50, you'll get $50 off. Now, this is a pure bodybuilding routine. It is a bodybuilder's program. You have to be relatively advanced to do this program because it will kick the yes. shit out of you. You need a baseline coming in. It is a tough program, but if you are advanced and you want to bodybuild, this is the best split program you'll find in the entire universe. <laughs> a little overconfident yeah. there. A little yeah. overconfident. I, I, be I believe you. I, I believe feel good you. about that. Yeah. yeah, But there's two days left. So mapsplit.com, enter the code SPLIT50, get $50 off. You only have two days left for that promotion. Now, we did also want to include a promotion for other people who maybe map split is not appropriate for like beginners or people who don't want to go to the gym and just want to work out at home, we have a program for you. It's called Maps Anywhere, and we made it really enticing. 
we actually cut the price in half. What? Yeah. Switch. Yeah. We've lost our minds like butcher This box. is the first time we have actually <laughs> ever Not quite cut a program in half for more than a single 20, for more than 24 hours. That's right. This is 50% off right. for the whole month of June. You can find maps anywhere at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, what's up on the screen? <clears throat> it's our a, handsome bodies. That's our new Organifi link. Oh, oh, they made they gave us their own little you know, landing I'm, page. I'm so glad that they didn't use the stupid picture that everybody yes. uses. Yeah. Doug, yeah. can we please get that other one off our I'm going to put website? a ban on that. Wait, what, picture. which picture? Hold on, which it's picture? It's the picture everybody uses of us. I fucking It's the hate very it. first picture we've we're ever in taken we're together. In, yes, it's like we're in Doug's living room. Oh, the I'm, one where I'm I in the back gla- flexing? I have glasses no, on. That, even that one's okay. That one's no, like halfway cool. Which one? It's the one where I- like, Yeah, Justin has glasses on. I'm wearing like a guest I'm long like sleeve over. shirt. I'm like, And I'm like hunched over you. You look all yeah. tiny. Yeah. And like it you looks look tiny. I look fat. It's yeah, know. it's a terrible picture. <laughs> yes. Well, this one it's looks not good. Inaccurate. This one looks good. This one. This a- was shot in Tahoe. Adam's beard is fuller it's than little, normal. It's a little out of control. <laughs> you know what yeah. though? It doesn't look. You know what you look like right there with a the full beard like that. What? You look like very fatherly. Fatherly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like paternal. Like oh, look at him. He's yeah. a he's a nice. He's gonna take care of. I don't people. know. You just you need a flannel. You're yeah. looking pretty manly. Yeah, it looks dude. very manly. Yeah. Justin looks like Justin. I don't think he ever changes. He's always I'm looking Justin like. Yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, he's, he looks like he goes too hard at everything. He looks <laughs> lovable right there. Super lovable. Yeah. You just want to spoon him. When's the in last time you hugged? Him? I don't know about that. When's the last time you gave him a good squeeze? I haven't. I don't allow him. it. I haven't given him. Yeah. yeah. It's you know what? Hard to get those from me. The the only time I think. I almost got one out of you when you were drunk a while ago. You started yeah. getting all lovey. Almost. Like, I watched, you know what, Sal? I like Everybody has you. that story. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit. I almost got a hug. I'm you like, almost said I, I love you. I'm like, should I go in for yeah. a hug and yeah. take advantage Didn't of this happen. intoxicated state? I watched uh, <laughs> Deadpool 2 last night. How'd you like it? So good. Isn't oh it good? Oh, my God. I need to see it so, so good. It's very, so very good. out of the loop. You know what's crazy? It's so good that it makes me not like any of the other Marvel comics, dude. Yeah. It's that good. It's you, so much better than all the rest of The movies? It's because it's comedy, dude. That's what they did. The sarcasm and everything. But there, you know, uh, did you guys read comic books when you were I kids? I loved the first one. Did you yes. guys ever? Okay, no, so Deadpool. Really. He was like that. In the yeah, comics. he broke the. What is it called? Broke the third wall, or what do they call broke it? Broke the mold. No, no. There's there's a wall in storytelling where the right. character never acknowledges that they're in a comic book or a character. Yeah. Deadpool would do that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, like so he, in between fighting, he'd look at you like as you're reading, and he'd say some shit to you or make a joke. Yeah. And so they break. They broke a rule with with Deadpool, and that's why he does that in the movie. It's so good. Yeah. 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 It yeah. makes it makes the movie so much more entertaining. Yeah. It's it's hilarious. It's well the done. part where well. the fourth wall. I said third wall, didn't I? Yeah. The four, the, or the fifth it's, wall. It's the third. It's the third Whoa. rail. The fourth wall. Hold on. Fourth the presence dimension. of the fourth wall is an established convention of modern realistic theater. Artists draw attention, direct attention to it for dramatic comic effect. When a boundary is broken. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. When the character addresses the audience, he broke the fourth wall. Yeah. There's a fifth wall. What the fuck's a Weird. fifth wall? Wasn't that you like- start talking to God? Remember Fred Savage? <laughs> wasn't that like part of his show? He'd like talk directly to the audience and then like get back No, his it. voice was. Oh, his voice was. That was narrated. the Wonder Years. Wonder Years, right. God, you know, I hated- I liked it, but I hated that show. Yeah. I liked that show because it was a good show. Yeah, I hated it because like- everybody said I looked like Paul. <laughs> his nerdy friend with yeah, glasses. Yeah, the nerdy one with glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I actually would get- Sorry, s- my brother used to get Screech all the time. That used to piss me off. Oh, shit. I used to get- he did the, look like Screech. What's the kid from Dawson's Creek? What's his name? And he also oh, was in yeah. uh, vars- Varsity Blues. Right, right, right. I can't think of his name. That's what I, in high school, that's what all it's the- It's Dawson. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is- I can't think of his, his name. His name is Creek. Yeah. He's the blonde guy? Not the blonde guy. Oh, the other one. Yeah, the other oh. dude. The one Doug, with- pull up. Oh, oh. So it's 20% off people get with Organifi. Oh, was that- I've a- been telling people 15% off. Was that, did we cut off your commercial for Organifi? No, or? no. I just it came back up oh, and okay. I didn't know it was, so you get 20% off everything when you use the code. I thought it was 15. I've been lying to people. Well, you know what's good is they go on there and get a pleasant surprise. Yeah, they yeah. get more. Get Doug, more pull up Dawson's off. Creek. I want to see a picture of who Adam looked like, apparently. Yeah. This you know is, what I mean? This is what all the, the girls... I didn't even know... Who, uh, so he, he must be good looking. Not, Was he a good looking I don't, dude? I don't think he's that good. I don't know. Well, I'll let you guys decide that. <laughs> I mean, you guys, he's out, I, don't, I don't know. Remember, in high school, I wasn't, kind like, of chubby I wasn't cheeks, like... as From that, what I remember. You know? Yeah. Which one? So, so there's that guy, right? Joshua Jackson. Yes, really? yeah, 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 yeah. That's a bad picture of him, though. Look that at, guy. Yeah, you look back. You look back at high school. He's like he's he's my age or older now. You need he's look. in a new Netflix series. I so, saw. Look, so look. go Joshua Jackson, yeah. uh, Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Creek. Yeah. Let's see what he looked like when he was a kid. James then, Vanderbeek. Yeah, he's not a bad looking dude right there, but he's uh, older right there, right? 
Yeah. So we'll, I, I think mean, he's, he was, he's he got was the, the, the chubbier cheeks. Yeah, he's got the round face. That's yeah. what I have going on for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's the, the fat face that. that kicks you in. Hit, you it's hit beneficial on you at 90. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that was when oh, you were eating shit. ice cream every night. So yeah. Like so, do you see it now or what? Yeah, yeah. you did look like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I had a more full, thick head of hair right there, like that's He's my hair used to look like. wearing the bowling shirt. Yeah. You did. like you right You did have like an innocent kind of look to your face it's a baby face yeah but yeah. like innocent like he looked yeah. like he was just a super like he's not he's a nice guy he's not like kinda... he needed the beard you look how much better he looks with the beard yeah. yeah yeah you now you look you still look like a nice guy you look like a, a rougher nice guy a rougher nice <laughs> guy. yeah like more dude how about how about this what about me and maps anabolic those videos oh, yeah. yesterday was a case oh, he's like yeah. salad's like Wait. about 12 yeah <laughs> <laughs> You do look way younger. You know, those videos know, aren't that old. How They're old are they, Doug? Uh, when did we shoot those videos? 2013. Okay, so it's a little while ago. It's, five years ago. Dude, I wish you would mm. I wish you would just trust me and and like you're so stubborn. Like if someone suggests something to you, you're like the worst. Like you don't want to do it. It has to be your idea. Yeah. But if you were to I dye your beard, like yeah. you would look fucking sick. Because yeah. the silver in your hair looks badass. The beard, it looks like shit on your face. Mm. So, <laughs> you need to, you, if you Why were, this? Yeah. Why you get, someone needs to tell you. You're trying to hurt my feelings? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't like, trying to, you don't like any salt I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get you to just do it one time and then see the response you get. It will, what it will do. So here's the thing. Who like, did that? It was the guy on like, uh, uh, what, what was that? Like that movie where they like were stripping. You know what I mean? Oh, Magic Mike. Magic Mike. Oh, that, that's that, that one guy, the that older Italian guy, dude, yeah. Manginello had, or whatever. I feel like he had like so, a dark beard and then silvery hair. Listen, and this is this is suggestions not coming from me. It'll this be is coming guy. from like my hairstylist. Like, and they'll tell you like a man's beard is like a way to contour and shape his face. Mm -hmm. mm. So when it gets all gray and speckly, it doesn't do that. It's all it looks like someone threw shit on your face. Now, mm. if you take it <laughs> and you dye it black, <laughs> it will start to contour your he face. So angry. Adam, Adam doesn't hold back because at all, I want to. I've been trying to suggest. Yeah. It nicely for a long time, and he won't listen to me. And I'm like, mm. just try it once, dude. Mm. You can wash it out or get rid of it or mm. shave it. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to end you. You know, your meanness convinced me. I think <laughs> yeah, takes... no. Just kidding. I already know That's it's a terrible effort. sales technique right there. <laughs> I can't sell you. You know, anymore. you got to do... just be jabbing at you. You know, you got to like, okay, fine. Don't, 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 what you have to do is when we you go on buy another, him some dye. When dude. we go on another trip, yeah, whisper it into my ear while I'm sleeping, and then maybe I'll wake up and be like, I have an idea. I'm going to document this, Adam. I want you to literally apply it to his face. Yeah, I'm going to video. It. Oh my God! Yes, can you here's, put, here's can you what I, my face? I just know yes. it's, we're gonna do it. And you're gonna be like, you're gonna look good, dude. Yeah, I used to dye. My, I, I dyed I, my beard a few times. I before. like I like the gray. Like I, it looks good for sure. The way it's speckled into your hair, but it, your beard it doesn't look right because mm -hmm. it, and because it, it's what shapes your face. And if mm -hmm. if you were to darken it, I mm -hmm. promise you, you would. Well, you know what? I think we'll leave it up to the audience. Wow. We'll let them. We'll see. Oh, you guys, no, because you know why? All the people that are in your feedback. camp are gonna be like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't really care. Look, here's why I don't. Here's what you have to do. You have to do it. And then you and put then a then picture and then, and then let people. Okay. That's what you Here's have to do. why I don't dye my beard. I'll tell you why. Because it's a. Don't step. sell it. No, I'm not selling it. It's. Oh. A, I'm just not. I'm not going to say anything about it being chemicals on my face and okay, xenoestrogen good. causing good. cancer. Okay, good. Although good. those <laughs> things may be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say any of that stuff. It's. It's, it's just another step. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's another thing. No, I right. respect that, that. That's a process. Now, yeah, I, res like, I don't want to do more stuff. No, 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 no. I respect that like, You got to wear a little bib Because I'm not... And... I mean, I have somebody <laughs> you know, do you, mine, right? You don't want to get it on your neck and stain your skin. Yeah. You know? Then I have to like... Then you're fucked. I feel like Jessica would love doing that. It'd be like a fun... Girls like doing stuff like that. Yeah, she likes my gray beard. That's true. She likes it. That's why it's fucked up your head. Oh, you, know wow. you know, you know, you know how many girls too that tell their guys too, like, "Oh, I like you like this," and you're like thirty pounds overweight. Yeah. It's like my like mom that, that says and my you, dad still looks at you with this hair behind, like he looks like he has a mullet. I'm always like, "Dad, give me your fucking mullet," <laughs> right. and he won't because my mom likes don't it. Be, hey, like, don't be fooled by our women telling us what they like all the time. They're trying to keep you off the oh, market. Yeah. I looked at my girl. I was like, "What the fuck were you not checking me the way I was dressing like four or five years ago and stuff like that?" Yeah. I had totally lost my swag, and you right? didn't even say nothing to me. Oh, I like the way you oh, dress. Oh, I like this. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, it looks. Stupid. I like that you're losing muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do you really? Yeah, right. Oh, I don't know. Because you think you hit the gym. Like, no one's I'm paying attention like, oh, to you, or they're yeah. calling you to think they're you old. You think it's a conspiracy? It is a conspiracy. It is. Damn it, babe. Are you trying to keep me ugly? <laughs> all women do this. Are you trying to do yeah, that? It's not. God, it's not it. her. Dude. Does it make that all big of a difference? Do this. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I might. I might do it. I might not. I don't hey, know. hey, you know, not to get all somber. On wait, wait, right. before you do, oh, okay. before you do, I want to bring something up because I feel like Butcher Box has lost their mind. Why? I feel like they've lost their mind. Oh, oh no. wait, wait, is this the bacon deal, dude? Can I just can say I this tell you how brilliantly amazing this they is? They did this last year, uh, and you know they had to stop
So here's the deal. Yeah, so you, call this the bacon bonanza. You get, if you subscribe to ba- to ButcherBox, you get free bacon. Ready? Forever. <laughs> for life. For the, life. The get out of here. Uh, bacon forever. Well, how is that even uh, possible? I have no idea. But like, what I'm happens signing if they, up? What yesterday. happens if we, like we have this scarcity of pigs one day and like the price of bacon goes like? Uh, yeah. Uh, Are they fucked? Well, I mean, what happens? Probably. Yeah. But let's let let's worry about that later. Right now, it's all about bacon forever. <laughs> just, <laughs> forever. Justin on his own. Listen, I told you guys. I make like I I make everything with butter and the other. Like big components that's bacon and cheese and cheese, yeah. butter, bacon, and butter, cheese. That's the Justin diet. It's very, Actually, very much my diet. We should write a guide okay. called the bacon, butter, and cheese diet because oh, I guarantee no. you will sell millions of copies. Very huggable. how to paint toilets all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> paint toilets. <laughs> that's, what that's that is. just a little bit of a contributor. I call it the okay. okay so I call it the, that. Problem. I call it the speckle bowl. So explain the special sauce because I, I know that Taylor if you just- subscribe to Butcher Box, where you you know you pay monthly, you get a box of. Whatever you pick, right? Chicken, the the their beef, it, super. Look, here's the deal. The Burger reason why we're patties. the reason why we're working with Butcher Box is the quality of their meat. The sourcing is yeah, it's insane. It's the best quality. But they were delicious and it's and very good, good quality. So, but if you sign up and you pay a fee and you get it delivered to you, whatever, just for signing up, as long as you keep your membership forever, they'll give you free bacon, which Dude, is I just have fun. That's so funny, bro. I'm like I, so excited. I feel like. Free bacon can get you anything. Like if I were running for president, for example, I'm like, hey, every, <laughs> everybody who votes it's for me, it's almost like bacon. here's some yeah. cocaine. You know, it's, like, it's yeah. like it's that's so exciting. Yeah, like, vote for me, yeah. you'll get free yeah. bacon, bacon for life. Bacon? Are you kidding you know me? I mean? Hey, um, I want I want to invade the rest of the world. I want to take over the world. <laughs> Don't do it. But if we do, we'll get free like, bacon for like life. You're literally going to put a smile on everybody's face. You can convince anybody to do anything if you yeah. offer bacon for <laughs> life. Like so easily, dirty. easily. I wonder if they'll have to shut it down like they did last time. Like this will be like a rush of people that will come in. It's kind of like what just happened with all. I hope so. I hope we like crash. Their website, like the know? movie pass, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, we crash the website. This, like, oh, this wave of bacon <laughs> mind baconators, pub, mind pub listeners love bacon. Yeah. Did you, know, Matt? You know who hates this? Vegans. <laughs> I hate this fucking deal. <laughs> this really goes against their morals. Because you know what bacon comes from? Yeah, cute pigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cute pig. Little, now, with well, the best part, uh, the best Charlotte's. part, really though, Sorry, aside from it being yeah. you know grass fed, grass finished, is also the fact that. Obviously not the bacon is, but I mean uh, the 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 meat that they send over. It's also the pricing. I mean, you can't to get to get grass fed, grass fed. I don't know how they make money. Is yeah. so expensive as it is, and then to be able to undercut the prices at a store, and then have the convenience of it shipped to your house. I think that's what it is, right? They eliminate well, the yeah, middleman. Yeah, yeah, they did exactly. They did like they like Thrive did. It. I mean, this is the future to me. The future <laughs> oh of how God. we're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice. Doug just pulled up a gif of a bacon, like like wearing a bikini sexy. and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be that surprised if I walked well, in on just kind of turning me on, jerking off to that. Yeah. Oh god, I, I wouldn't be that bit. surprised. Oh god, it's disgusting. Yeah, it is. But you were saying about them. Yeah. You yeah. forgot. No, I, I, no, it's just that I think the future of how we're going to get. I mean. How convenient is it now that we can get food like this shipped to your house, like literally almost overnight, man? That's oh. so that's so badass. Technology, yeah. bro. I know. The technology has, has has created has eliminated so many barriers. I wonder what it's going to do to like grocery stores and places like that. You got to think in the future that it's just. Did n- you know you can? Because you know Amazon yeah, and Whole Foods, go. right? Amazon owns Whole Foods now, right? Right. Did you know that you can order your groceries online from Whole Foods and it'll be delivered to your house in two hours? Did you guys know that? Two hours. Yeah, of course. Of How the course. fuck are they They're, doing that? Because it's Amazon. Two hours. Pretty soon. That's crazy. Pretty soon you're going to order food and it's going to be like Star Trek where it's going <laughs> to... Yeah. There it is. Right or it's already me. built in. No, you get a 3D just, print it. You know, yeah, that's me. true. Dude, in, in did you guys house. see all the people on our forum that have 3D printers yeah. already? Yeah. yeah. Our form is so cool. Yeah, they yeah. are. We do God, have. The, they're cool. I was like, we, wow, you already have that. I know. I didn't know. Uh, you could, some guy said he like immediately once he bought it, he like made another one. Printed another one. Like another one of our forum, one of like, our forum guys has three, has three, three in his house printer. already. You know what? I, you know what's fun? so I get a lot of questions. Actually, a very common question is Sal, where do you get your studies that you quote so much? These days, I get them from the forum, <laughs> all from the forum. Yeah, it's such a great resource for me because people will post them. Like, cool, I'll talk about that. Yeah, on tomorrow's episode. Anyway, somber. You were going to bring something up. I yeah. think I know what you're going to talk about. Yeah, dude. We we have Anthony Bourdain and, Fuck, man. and Kate Spade this last week. I know. Super, Young, both super of them. Sad. Yeah. 61. Anthony Bourdain was 61. 
who I was a big fan of his. I don't know about you guys, but I mm-hmm. really liked that mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. He was a jujitsu uh, dude. Everybody player. believed like he, he had the life, right? Like you yeah. mean, uh, yeah, all over the world. Like yeah, dude. He was. I mean, food wise, everything else. Like he's made a ma- massive he, impact. He he's one of, he's w- one of the pe- few people who I've heard other people say like, I would love, I want his life. Right. Like, I've heard people say that yeah, before yeah. about like what he does. He's a for, very very interesting guy. And then Spade, she was fifty five, I think. Crazy. And she did she hung, know much she hung her. herself. Yeah. What, what happened with there? She hung herself yeah i mean like what so she was an actress like no no she know? made no she made purses like designer yeah, purses. Kate, kate spade purses and i don't know oh yeah, you I don't know the really brand oh yeah, yeah it's a very popular brand okay yeah, yeah it's you know what it highlights to me is that because if you look at the uh, the the drug abuse rate the mental illness rate and the, the suicide rate uh for when it in, in regards to celebrities in comparison to the average population or whatever, it's it's kind of high, and I think what it highlights is you know, here here are people with fame, money, access to you know everything, sex, anything, drugs, right. like whatever. Basically, way more. Like if you're if you're a celebrity at that level, Dude. your life is so different than your life than than the average person in terms of access to all these material things yeah. that you want, and yet these people. They, they, the depression rate is so high, and I think, and I'm speculating. I'm not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist, but it is a subject that I'm very passionate about because I find the human psyche very, very interesting. And I think what happens in these situations is, here you are, you're somebody uh, who may be suffering from depression or whatever, and you think you're going to find meaning and purpose and happiness in material things. Like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna you know, devote myself to working my ass off to make a lot of money, or I want to achieve this particular level of success because that's what's going to do it for me. And then the worst possible thing that could happen <laughs> for you is you actually get what you want. Exactly. And Dude, then you it, realize it, it's it is not. so much yeah. like the Twilight Zone story you share, The mm-hmm. Alchemist. I mean, it really, how crazy is it that, you know, when you, we start to look at that, when you see these type of examples, like, you know, is it maybe the maybe the no and that that you can't have or that you have to work towards that that that's where the joy and the happiness is really found? Like trying to look at things like that, like wow, you know, these people, how many no's do you think they had? You know, how many no's do you think they get or things they couldn't have? Like mm-hmm. you get to a point where you make that kind of money, you're at that level that people are just giving you everything you could ever possibly want and some and anything mm-hmm. you do want you can literally go purchase and buy or experience mm-hmm. and it really might take a lot of the excitement out of life it, part of the excitement yep. over life is is seeing something that you potentially can't have or been told no you can't have it and then having to work towards it and i think it's not the it's not the end goal or it's not the thing that you achieve when you finally get there but really the beauty is in the journey there i i agree and i and i also mm. think you know if you look at uh human the human existence or the human condition for the vast majority of the time that we've been on earth life for everybody everybody men and women you know children whoever was extremely difficult was extremely oppressive. You know, we died from everything. We were hunted by other animals. We were starving. We, we so much mystery uh, in life. We didn't understand why we would get sick, why people would die, why our children would die, wars and famines. And it was a, a grueling, miserable life in existence. And I think humans evolve. And, and, and here's the thing. We're also blessed and cursed with, with consciousness. We're, we're aware of a future and a past. We're aware of all these different things. And I think in order to deal with ourselves, with that consciousness, we had to learn how to find purpose. And purpose is not being happy and having good things happen all the time. Purpose is finding meaning in the bad shit, the bad shit that happens to you. Like, oh, you know, I lost my job or I lost a loved one or, you know, I, this terrible thing happened to me. Well, what's the meaning behind that? What can I take from that? Why did that happen? And if you don't find, per- if you try to fill that hole within you with material things, I watched a, a great uh, video with Bishop Barron. He's that Catholic priest I was talking about. The Re- reason why I love the guy so much is forget the religious stuff. That's not the stuff that attracts me to him. It's he, he talks about these real things and he talks about this spiritual silo that we have that is what gives us purpose and meaning. And he goes, if you're trying to fill it with 
material things, if you're trying to fill it with, you know, stuff that you can buy, if it's you're trying to fill it with pit. it, it'll ne- not only will it never fill, but it gets it, it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, mm-hmm. and you start to become more desperate as mm-hmm. you realize this isn't helping. And I can't imagine a more desperate situation than being depressed and searching for those things and thinking you're going to get it. Oh, you know what? When I finally make a million dollars, when I finally make $5 million, when I finally get famous, when I finally get all these things, then I'll finally find peace. And then you get that stuff Mm. and you're sitting there and you're like, fuck, I didn't get what I thought I would get. Mm -hmm. That's a scary situation to be in. And that's, well, I think that's what happens to a lot of these really like super famous people that we hear that, that that take their lives. Now, of course we are completely speculating. You have no idea what else is going on in this person's life or if there was, and and many times it's not chemical. How much is it? Right. Like coming from, right. There could be many variables that, that, you know, send them over the tipping point to, to take their own lives. But more than likely, I think that, you know, I think you're on the right track that all these things that many of them thought were probably going to give them mm-hmm. this this Fills happiness. The void. Yeah, and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, maybe chemicals or maybe someone in their yeah. life they lose or whatever. You know, could you imagine being somebody like this? And again, this is me all. I have no idea this if this pertains to them. But could you imagine being somebody who has literally dedicated your entire life to chasing money or chasing things or success? Uh, while you had this incredible partner all along the while with you and you finally achieve it, you're there, life is so grand and then that you lose them, right? They mm-hmm. die or something like, mm-hmm. and you think back like, holy fuck, I had the last 30 years with them, mm-hmm. but I was so myopically focused on my own, my own desires mm-hmm. and goals mm-hmm. and monetary things and these things that I thought were going to create happiness that once I achieved all of them, I realized it wasn't. Right. And in fact, it's all those little moments that I had with her or him that were that were really feeding my soul. And I really devalued that because I was so focused on these other things. Dude. Like, imagine how how crushing that has to feel for somebody oh, potentially. Terrible. I, I think I think your story, Adam, is a is one that I like to to communicate is where you you were in an industry making a shit ton of money with potential to make way more fucking money Mm -hmm. and you left that industry because you know in your words you were like well this is not what i thought it would be it's not what i want and you came back to the industry that made that gave you that sense of purpose which is health and fitness i mean that must have been what what was that what was that like figuring that out well i think I, think, I mean, uh, and kudos to you for being self-aware enough. To well, know I that. think I'm really lucky, right? I, I really believe that one. I was I was rewarded for getting into a space uh, early. Funny you bring this up because I just posted. Did you see my post I just did yesterday? You know, I I was rewarded for getting moving into a, a space or moving into blue water before it's shark infested like it is now. I mean, everybody and their mother seems to be jumping on the the cannabis bandwagon. So I was rewarded for that and and saw a lot of success really quick. And so the lucky part was that it came quick, right? Like how much that would have sucked had I moved into that space and it got drug out over 15, 20 years. Oh, yeah. Right, chasing That's a good point. Ch- chasing it where I, I was rewarded really quick mm. and then all of a sudden I had this abundance of materialistic things and I remember just kind of... And it, it, it for about a year, it... it it didn't really sink in for a year. It was fucking rad. Like I'll be the first sure. to, you know, it was, you know, the toys and the, the, the travel and the, you know, crazy nights and, and parties and things that I was able to do and stuff. And, and also to, I, I'm a big giver. So I was able to bring a lot of people along with me. Like I elevated many other lives with, along with me, which that kind of fed my soul a little bit for a while, but then it got to a point where, you know, I, you know, and I, I'm definitely not was was not at Anthony Bourdain or or Kate Spade's level at all. But for me, and what I thought I needed to be at, you know, as the young kid that didn't have much growing up, you know, I had I had achieved what I wanted to do financially or success as far as success was concerned, or what I thought was success at that point. And when I realized that, when I when I you know looked at my life and thought about like how I felt physically, how I felt emotionally the relationships that I had built, the interactions I was having on a daily. And if I was really being honest with myself, I really wasn't happy with a lot of that. I wasn't happy with the people that I was networking with on a regular basis. You know, that's a big part of what I love to do. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm having to communicate with all these people that were into a lot of drug dealers, a lot of shady people, a lot of people that just have different passions than I did. And I wasn't into that. My health was deteriorating. I was starting to uh, start to really 
decline after uh, you know the first year or so that I was getting into it. So I saw that. Uh, the relationships that I was in, I had a failed, the first time I ever had like a really failed relationship. First time a a woman had ever cheated on me was during that time. I mean, I had a lot of things outside of the money uh, success that I was having that was really kind of telling me, but a lot of people, I think what they do, and I did this for a while too, is you, you numb it with like nothing like, you know, you know, it's cool when a girl cheats on you, and you can hop on a plane the next day, go to Vegas, drop twenty, thirty thousand dollars with a friend, poolside with girls all over sure, you, and sure. par- I mean that'll numb that right up, right. you know. And you can only, but you can only do that so many times before you realize, like, you have to keep upping the ante, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly, you know, because the, you know before that was that was a big deal. When that becomes no longer a big deal anymore, it's like, well, what else do I need to do to mm-hmm. try and band aid this this stuff? And so, you know, I, I started to piece that together. And, you know, what I, where I, where I think I was blessed and lucky was that I was, I was wise enough because I was older at this point in my life. And so I had, and I've shared this before on the show that I took my, I had this, you know, after I'd made a bunch of money when I was in my early twenties, spent and lost a lot of that money and saw where my house went as I lost a ton of equity with the whole, you know, 2009 era and stuff like that. What I started this thing where, okay, I need to be more responsible financially. And so anytime that a month would end, I would evaluate my my income and say, okay, let's say I had $500 or let's say I had you know $15,000 extra at the end of the month. I had to invest or save half of that. And then the other half of that, I could you know go blow and spend. Mm-hmm. So because I had implemented that into my life, it really saved me because you know after a couple of years of blowing a lot of money and trying to fill this empty hole, I still had a lot of money that I had put away and saved and and covered myself to now reevaluate where am I at in my life right now? What really does serve me? What does make me happy? And that's what drove me back to fitness. And and I was I was okay. I was lucky enough to be able to say I could walk away from everything. I could say I'm going to just bury my head into this. We'll figure it out. That's when Justin and I really reconnected again and we started working on the app at that and time. And you were dating Katrina at this point? I was just starting to get with Katrina. So Katrina was with me on the exit of the the cannabis clubs, but still was with me when I was still brokering cannabis to all of the clubs. So oh, I, I, I used a lot of my relationships that I built when I was running the clubs to then use to you know broker can. And sure. I was also growing and doing all those things. So that was, uh, and then I and I continued to do that for a while, and you know until finally I was just like, and I, I had lost family over, I've lost friends, like so one of my best friends we don't speak anymore, so that happened during that time. Mm. A, a family member, a cousin of mine, like I completely wrote off him during that time, so I destroyed more relationships at the time during that I was making the most money and had these things that I thought were so important. I destroyed the most relationships, both family, friends. Uh, a, f- a female relationship, like in that time, mm-hmm. and looking that, and that's me being looking back now. In it, you don't see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In it, it's there. It's them, right? If she cheated on me. It's her fault, right? You know what I'm saying? She, mm-hmm. that's bad on her. Yeah, or, clarity comes when you when you step out of a situation, and if you're self aware enough, you can you can start to get clear, right? But when you're in it, it's so it's like being in the, being in a game versus watching a game. You're in a game, you only see what's right in front of you. Right. And that doesn't tell you the whole story. It's so great too, because I even look at my attitude now with, you know, the way we handle this business. And it's, I'm, I'm again so glad and lucky that I went through all of that first before we all came together. Because even when I look at money and finances now, because I, I still enjoy that stuff, I'm still monetarily driven. But I, I look at it more like a feedback or like a point system. Mm-hmm. to me now than I do like I need to reach this dollar amount. So like when I see revenue coming in for the business and it's not like, oh, I get excited because I'm going to go buy myself something. In fact, many times we don't even touch that kind of money, right? It goes back into the business. It's more like a, a feedback yeah. of, oh, it's growing. Oh, it's doing well. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's like, like the business is healthy right now. Yeah, right. It's yeah. like scoring it's points, be, you know, yeah. for us, for the win. You know, it's, it's not- It's a difference between like being happy that you see your business growing and needing it right, right. To, mm-hmm. to do that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. It's a big, there's a big difference. Right. You know, it's that needing that's a, that, for me, like my kids- <clears throat> I mean, they do that for me more than anything else I can imagine. I mean, having children is uh, the most I could I could I could easily say the most challenging thing that I that I do on a, on a regular basis. And it's challenging for a lot of different reasons. It's challenging because you have to sacrifice a lot, of course, money and time and you know freedom. 
Um, it's challenging because nothing will challenge your sense of vulnerability like a child. Like if I don't have kids, you know, if something happens to me, or, I mean, of course, if something happens to my family members, that, that I'll worry about that kind of stuff. But it's not like worrying about your kids. Like when my kids walk to school, if my son forgets to text me when they get there, there's that kind of challenge, right? There's a challenge of that fear, the challenge of watching them go through their challenges and growth, the challenges of when they're when they want to, you know, test and, and be rebellious, and they haven't even become teenagers yet, so I don't even know what that's going to be like. Like it's the most challenging thing, easily I can say uh, that I that I have to do. Um, but at the same time, nothing gives me purpose and meaning like that. Nothing at all. Like I, I look at them and I look at what I do and, and what I do for them and, and, you know, watch them grow. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's fulfilling. It's fulfilling. It's not happiness. Although there are extreme times of happiness with my kids where I'm just ecstatic. Um, it's, it, it, but happy, you know, you get happy, sad, frustrated, mad. My kids will piss me off too. It's, it's fulfillment. It's, it's hard to explain, but I think that's well, the best word. Even with kids or not kids, right? I really think they're, it's the, it's the challenge, right? So yep. this, it's lucky, it's lucky for me that I also have <clears throat> an incredible partner now. I mean, Katrina being with me for seven years now, obviously is, is very much so responsible for a lot of my growth and evolution too, because I, ha- I have a partner I can rely on to check me on my shit or have me look at things differently instead of just jumping on the feel sorry for myself. Yeah, that's such a valuable thing. Oh, by the it's way, incredible. You to know, have somebody there that that, uh, that you know is going to challenge right, you. Right, right. You guys were just yeah. joking about it before we got on air. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. We did yesterday. We were watching yeah. this video that we all did. We're <laughs> we're using a teleprompter that we have, and we're doing this like presentation thing and. And we all watched it as a group with our like our marketing team, like everybody's there, so it's like a big big group or whatever. And at the end of it, we're like, "Oh, that was good, that was good." And, and Katrina's like, "I could tell Adam's reading or something like that." Was- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Real quick to let me yeah, know, that's that, right? Yeah. But she also does it too, where like, you know, I, this is a business, and we we there's definitely hard days and challenges, and you know, I'll come home and I'm venting, I'm frustrated because something's not working the way I wanted it to, or whatever, right? And she always just checks me that, like, you know, do, do, would you want it to always go your way? Like, you wouldn't, would you? And it's so true. It's like if it was so easy, how quick would you be bored? You know, how yeah. quick would it be unfulfilling that it's like if anyone could just do it or if it was that easy, then it, it wouldn't be desirable for me to pursue yep, it. Yep. The fact that it's challenging, the fact that I have these setbacks, the fact that I fall down, the fact that I fuck up, the fact that I make bad decisions or I get frustrated mm-hmm. is the real sauce, mm-hmm. man. That's where this, that's where it's really sweet it's, is learning to. Yeah. It's interesting to me just to think about how many people are really like stuck in that frame where they're still trying to hustle and trying to get, you know, to a place and a destination. And, um, they're not pursuing anything that's giving them current purpose, you know, like they're in a job space where they're doing it and it's out of like, um, you know, they're, they're trying to survive. It's, it's protective, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's comfortable, it's safe. And, uh, I'm, it's interesting to me because I mean, it's, it's not that long. Like I've been an entrepreneur, like I, you know, I was sort of in, in the mindset, you know, of like, I need to get a job, the scarcity, like side of that, like, it's, it's frightening, you know, like, how am I going to, how am I going to make ends meet? You know, how am I going to do this? And, um, you know, to, to be able to kind of pull yourself out of that and then create something yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so empowering. I, I it's funny cause I'm always like suggesting that to people, but it's not for everybody at no. the same time, you no, know? No. And so it doesn't have to be with business. It could be it, with so many other things. Sure. One, one, one of the things that I enjoy communicating to people and clients is doing things for the sake of doing them or doing things for the sake of the enjoyment of doing them. And when you can find that space, uh, and I use this usually in the context of fitness, because when I'm talking to clients, obviously I'm trying to help them, you know, create a healthy lifestyle, a fit lifestyle. And so I try to communicate them that training and exercising and eating for goals, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Um, all of us tend to set goals and want to achieve and accomplish particular milestones. But but if that's all of your motivation, you're not going to be in a good place. It's yeah. not going to you're not going to be consistent and you're going to find very quickly that uh, it's it's not going to be enjoyable. Now, if you exercise and eat right for the sake of the pleasure of doing those things, like if you sit down in front of a plate of really fresh organic vegetables and you know, grass fed meat or whatever, healthy, you know, well prepared types of foods. And, and you're doing it not for the goal of losing weight, 
But if you're doing it for the sake of the pleasure of doing that one thing Mm -hmm. and you find pleasure in that, or if you find pleasure in exercise, like I work out today and I do have goals sometimes, but the main reason why I work out is I enjoy working out. Like I just enjoy the process of doing it. I'll never stop because well, what of that. you're describing is being like we keep talking about being present, but like even like the challenge of raising kids and like they they're <laughs> they force you to be present in that very moment. Like mm-hmm. they, they like none of that other shit you're thinking about like matters at all to them. And like they want they want that that attention. They want that the eyes and, and they want your your being to be there with them. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I, I'm finding that even more with like, if I'm training or if I'm, you know, yeah, I want to get ready for whatever the fuck goal I have or whatever, but what really matters is what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And how about I just focus on this specific exercise, this specific workout Mm -hmm. and the more intent I can bring into that process, you know, the better it, it makes everything. And plus my mental state is way better and yeah. healthier at, in that process. You're, it's such a mindset too. Like you know, if I'm if I'm sweeping leaves in my in my backyard, <clears throat> right? It, it, it wasn't that long ago where any type of manual you know labor I fucking dreaded. I hated it. I hated it so much. But now what I do and the mindset that I create now when I'm doing these types of things is I as I say to myself like, well, I'm here. I'm doing this. I wonder if I can find enjoyment in the act of actually doing this. And you know what's funny? You can, and you can do it many, many times. I've mm-hmm. done this when working with my dad. My dad works with his hands a lot. And when I was a kid, he used to bring me along. And although I enjoyed spending time with my dad, I used to also hate doing mixing cement and grabbing the buckets of sand and bringing them on. I was like so hard or whatever. But at one point as I got older, I remember thinking to myself like, well, I'm here with my dad. This isn't going to last very long because at, you know, pretty, pretty, at some point I'm not going to be doing this. I'm going to be moved out of the house and stuff like that. And so at one point I started just enjoying what I was doing at that moment. Like I'm having, I'm here with my dad and we're building things together and we're doing, and it's like a light bulb. It just, it switches and all of a sudden it's almost like. And changing your perspective. Don't make reality your enemy. Like don't go to war with your reality. Make friends with it. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're too short, if you're too, you know, fat, if you're, you know, if you live in a place or whatever, sometimes you can make friends with it because it, cause it's the reality and, you know, you can work towards changing things at the same time, but you can make friends with it and find that it'll change, you know, I, I guess it gives you kind of a little bit of a purpose and meaning behind what, you know, what's going on. And, you know, I'd like to say this, you know, I know we have a large audience and, you know, maybe you're listening right now and you're in a, in a sad state. Maybe you're depressed you feel empty, you feel numb. And I, I, you know, I, I tell you what, like, you know, re, you can always reach out to one of us and, and hopefully we'll, you know, mm-hmm. we get lots of messages. So, but hopefully we'll see yours and we'll reach out to you. But just know that uh, p- there's people definitely care. Even if you feel like nobody does, people definitely do. And the first person that, that needs to care is you. And, and, and just, you know, I hope that that'll, that'll help people, you know, out just by hearing that. So yeah, for sure. My, my sister just sent me a text saying that Kaepernick is trying to sue Trump. Wow. <laughs> please pull that up. Please pull that up, Douglas. Please pull that up. Are we, we can't talk about that on right this now? episode. Can Maybe we? The next one. Can we? Can, why not? Can we just go right now and record this all motherfucker? Right, Let's right. do this. I know what you'll do. Be like, hey, Doug, before you say the quick. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Doug, before we go, pull up that thing that Adam just mentioned. Dude, my sister just texted me right now that. Breaking news. Capper Dork is trying to sue freaking Donald Trump. For what? I don't know. I got it. We got to Google Google wow. magic over there. Let's go, Douglas. That's um, talk to me here. I didn't even know this was happening. News. The last person you should try suing on Earth. Report: Colin Kaepernick expected to subpoena Donald Trump. What is that whole article saying? I can't and read. Mike it. Pence. The next. Well, I got to read it. Uh, you got to <laughs> open the. The next oh, move go. in Colin Kaepernick's collusion collusion case against the NFL could involve subpoenas against Donald Trump and Mike Pence. His legal team are expected to seek a federal subpoena to get testimony from Trump and Pence and other officials about what? The goal is to find out via the Federal Arbitration Act what Trump, Pence, and those officials said in direct discussions with NFL owners about Kaepernick's free agency. Oh, he just wants to find out what they said to the NFL owners, what their influence was. He can do that? 
Like yeah. you could subpoena the president about Te- a private conversation. Well, apparently, uh, like we live like in a world like that, you could do that. I guess they're trying to. I use want to the, subpoena the, Trump. The Federal Arbitration Act. Good luck. Wow. Yeah. Good luck. They, with that. Uh, come on. They just laugh at that, that's right? A lot of that's money, a, that's dude. Like, that can't carry any weight. I mean, I how know. much money does that cost to, to I am, put all I, that together? I, sister, I am pre- appreciate the love sending over so I can look this up, but I don't think that this has any legs. Yeah. I don't think you. I mean, come on, Donald Trump's just gonna. It's just it, probably a publicity stunt. It, it does get, sound a lot like a publicity stunt, right? Trump's gonna laugh at it, be like, "Fuck off, I'm the president, bro." <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah. subpoena me. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I yeah. don't know. That'll be interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. I'm sure he'll get a lot of support with it, but yeah, yeah I don't oh, know. Of that's course, gonna go anywhere. He's already got a ton of support as it is. All right, yep. all right. Bring on the question, Douglas. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com. And use a coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Carmen Alessa. Do you think bodybuilding and just training in the gym is for those people who aren't talented or good enough for real sports, such as football, soccer, Olympic Whoa, lifting, what? et cetera? Explain Whoa. that to me. Do you think bodybuilding? So so she starts off by saying, <laughs> by the way, she's a huge fan. She's a pretty ripped young lady. Carmen Alessa, a great page. But anyway, it says, very controversial question and not her opinion. Do we I think like this question. Do we think that but I was like, do you would. <laughs> do we think that bodybuilding like in the gym is for people who aren't that talented at like real sports? Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. well, you know, definitely not cuz I yeah. did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I can play sports. It's completely different. Although, I will say that it is very common to meet a lot of very unathletic bodybuilders. Yeah, you know what's so funny? So it's it's it is it is common. It and, reminds me of like just because somebody's muscular and built because they lift weights in the gym does right. not make them athletic. Well, let's let's unpack this a little bit. Mm. They're just muscular. Let's 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 unpack this a little bit. There is, um, and this is an overgeneralization, but it's yeah. true yep. that uh, many bodybuilders that are huge, big, monster steroid guys out, or someone who grows that size, are, were driven through insecurities because you were probably very small. Most of them have these great transformation pictures of when they were a sixteen-year-old boy, mm-hmm. and so they probably didn't have the most athletic build when they were younger therefore they probably weren't very good at sports uh therefore they felt they found something that you know fed that fed their physique or was able to build it and shape it and they latched onto it and then be, and in fact now that's an overgeneralization yeah. there's exceptions i'm an exception to the rule i was an athlete my whole life I pursued it for other reasons, so of course I'm not alone. There's other people like that. Well, Phil Heath, Mr. Olympia, wasn't yeah. he a college basketball he, player? I don't know if he played college, but he uh, he played basketball yeah. definitely in high school. And he was now he was an exception to the rule as far as you know he was this just genetic freak, you know, and yeah. that's why he's named that. And he was that way in high in high school. He looks better than what I look like on 500 milligrams of testosterone. Oh, yeah. You see that picture of him when he's in high yeah, school? Yeah, in right? high school yeah, playing playing basketball. I don't even know if he's lifting weights at that time. Just shooting a ball around <laughs> made him look like Wasn't a, Ben Pikulski like an athlete too yeah, before? Yeah, I think Ben was. Yeah. yeah. He said the first time he squatted, it's like three, 400 pounds, something like that. Yeah. It just yeah. naturally Fuck just you, ben. sat into it. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, you and your genetics. Right. But I definitely think there is a lot of, I mean, I think there's a lot of insecurity in bodybuilding. I think there's a lot of people yeah, that- that's, that's not a controversial statement. That's yeah. that's true. Yeah, right. These these. And that's it's true too that I think a majority of them are unathletic. Now right. it doesn't mean that there's still a bunch of them that are athletic. I think uh, there's I, there's a lot that are. It's I mean not a lot. I would just say that it's totally an overgeneralization. You know, like you, I think it just hits on on you know something that whereas an athlete you kind of look at at some guys that are humongous and you want to kind of take them down a notch. You know, there's yeah. a little bit of that too from the insecurity from the athlete side. Oh, of course. You know, like kind of looking at these guys. It's like, oh, well, they're, they're huge. Yeah, but they can't fucking move. And then every now and then you'll see one that does like backflips and like, you know, can jump out of a pool and you're like, oh shit. You right. Know? So it's, it's just funny to me because it, 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 it highlights a lot of like this, this division where it's like, you know, I want to, I see somebody doing something awesome and I want to kind of cut at them a little mm-hmm. bit, you mm-hmm. know? And uh, it, it's funny because I've, I actually caught myself a lot growing up with that. 
with that kind of chip on my shoulder that like I'm an athlete, you know, I'm an athlete. I f- actually fucking use my muscles, right? You know, those stupid <laughs> bodybuilders, like all they're doing is just puffing themselves up to like peacock around and look like assholes and, and be a douchebag in the gym and check themselves in the mirror, right? Right. right. Like I, I I don't live like that, like yeah. you know. And I had this like total like like perception of them. Meanwhile, that, you're walking around at a badass because you're an athlete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> it's just like it's one of those things though. It's um I had to check myself on that and like really like calm down and, and appreciate it more as I as I started to train that way too. And I I remember like going through that and like starting to do hypertrophy training. Like, oh my God, this is fucking brutal. Like it's a brutal process. And mm-hmm. and then there's that other side of the eating component that I was like completely uninterested in. Yeah. And um and and then going through that, it's like it gives you like an appreciation that yeah. yes, it's just such a discipline on a completely different spectrum than what That's I all it was is. doing. Yeah. It's just different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember remember when we used to hang out with Craig a lot and he was when he was living over here. And God, he used to get so mad if you referred to a competitor, a bodybuilder as an athlete, you know, cause I used to, oh, I still, right. yeah, I still right. talk like that. Like when I, when I, I, to me, they're all sports and, and you're an athlete in your you own. You know, that was a debate back in the day. Is it, it a sport or is it art? That in the seventies and eighties, it was a big debate. Right, right. And, mm-hmm. and I think there, there, mm-hmm. there, there definitely is a athletic component to it. I don't care what you say, yeah. you know, like you're, you can, look, there's an athletic there skill is. to lifting weights. Here's the deal. Bodybuilders. Definitely build athletic ability at their sport. So if you watch a bodybuilder work out, they work out good. They know how to work out, at it, least their it is bodies. Specificity. Yeah, they know how to contract muscles, isolate muscles. They know how to, you know, hit a body part a particular way. They know how to angle, you know, exercise. Which to me, I think, is no different than comparing a tennis player to a football player. That's I right. I mean, there's a lot of major differences between those two sports, yep. but they're still they're, they're still sports in their own Dude, right. Take you know? a top level swimmer and put them on a field and watch how athletic they are. They're not. Right. You know, because what makes you good at swimming probably makes you terrible on land and vice versa, right? You need short legs in the pool with a long torso and long arms. On the field, you want kind of the opposite. Here, look, here's a, here's a, this is a little bit of a generalization, but there's a lot of truth there. Generally speaking, more strength and more muscle will benefit you at whatever sport you do. Generally, not always, of course. Like if you're, if you're a, you know, if you if you race horses, you don't want to be a massive person. If you're in a weight class, you don't want to be a massive person. But generally speaking, more strength will definitely benefit you. So bodybuilding or resistance training, I should say, will benefit any sport. But if you go into the, if you never played sports, and all you do is go to the gym to build muscle, you're not going to get better at sports. You're just going to be a bigger, stronger right. version of yourself, which was someone who was not athletic to begin with. Right. There there is no place I see this where it's more prevalent than in the fighting sports. Hmm. So much more prevalence in the fighting sports because in the fighting sports, you know, if you're a fighter, if you're a boxer or a wrestler or a grappler, you're always testing yourself against another person and it's yeah. dominance, right? Yeah. Can I pin you or can I choke you out or can I knock, knock you, out. you out? And big dudes with a lot of muscle, you know, if you get two people of equal skill, like exactly the same skill, same fitness level, uh, except one of them is bigger and stronger, and they fight, the bigger, stronger guy is going to win because strength does matter. It's just Well, we saw this. We saw, if you're going to use MMA, you saw this example when we saw Brock Lesnar come, <laughs> yeah, come exactly. into the uh, UFC. You know, he yeah. he came out and like kind of dominated some of his fights right away because he was ju- his brute strength was so much. Yeah, he was it so wasn't much, even the technique. It was no like, technique. Yeah, he, well, just, he was a wrestler and he was a D1 did, wrestler. He, yes, so he came in with that background. I'm just mean in terms in, of In like, comparison? Yeah, comparison? Well, yeah, then you saw he ran into Frank Mir and Frank, Frank Mir, Mir fucking ankle, ankle locked, locked him and fucked him within yeah. the first then the round. next time they fought yeah that didn't happen no right. no and here i mean yes bigger and stronger if all other factors are are, are the same is going to help you win but i used to see this in, in jiu-jitsu all the time because a big guy would come in would want to sign up has zero skill in jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu is one of those sports where you know if you're if you're throwing punches there's always a luck you always have a lucky puncher's chance like if you connect luckily with a punch and you're a big strong dude mm-hmm. you're going to put someone to sleep there's no luck in jujitsu. You have to know the technique, or you don't. Like you're not going to submit someone just out of you know sheer luck. Just well, you're not going to submit somebody that has technique and understands it, right? I could go put someone in a chokehold without any sort of practice of jujitsu, yeah, but it's I'm just not. A smaller I'm not getting a. I'm not getting a guy who's a black belt in jujitsu. I'm not putting him in some choke or yeah. anything. I'm and getting so, choked out. And so for you sure, see you them know? all the and time, abiding by their rules. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you so you see it all no the way. time, and it's it's always fun because you know you have skill and technique, and so it's like it's your own ego, right? Oh, I'm going to show this big guy 
I can manipulate his body and choke him out and put him in an arm lock or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you see that all the time. But yeah, why do people pick bodybuilding? It's not because they suck at sports. It's because they want to bodybuild. I mean, that's really, I mean, I got into lifting weights not because I sucked at sports. I got into lifting weights because I wanted to build muscle because I was insecure about my body. It wasn't because I said, oh, shit, I got to find something (laughs) I can do because I suck at everything, you know, sport wise. The reality was I didn't even care about that. I really didn't give a shit. It was, I'm going to lift weights because I know that's what's going to put the most muscle on my body because that's the one thing that's designed specifically to do that. And so that's what I ended up getting good at. But in terms of like, why are they doing that? Is it because they suck at sports? No. But yeah, bodybuilding isn't going to make you better at sports. Although I will say this, if you take the average sedentary person who does nothing and then you take the average guy or girl who lifts weights on a regular basis and both of them are shitty at sports and Uh then you have them go play a sport... The dude that works out or the girl that works out has an advantage. For yeah, sure. they're fit. Yeah, they're more fit. They're yeah. more strong. There's more strength, yeah, more strength, mobility. Strength, cardiovascular, everything that comes into play. Then. Yeah, all yeah. that comes into the play. The funny part was when we used to have like when we were at 24 Hour Fitness together and we had like a group of trainers. Everybody was in great shape, I right? Mean, great shape. And then we went out to like play softball. <laughs> and you just like quickly realize who yeah. has any athleticism at all. Yeah. And it's, it was very very crazy to me there was only like maybe two or three people that actually had athleticism yeah and i was like very thrown back by that because i i just assumed right away just based off their physique and the way that they moved that they had athleticism and it was not even no it's it's, that's why i think it's i mean where where she's heading with this question i think there is some truth to this that Mm -hmm. you know i do believe that there is a large portion of people that tend to gravitate towards bodybuilding that maybe failed towards athletic pursuits or maybe never really pursued them at all. Didn't I'm care. Sure it's happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They would, they instantly fell. I mean, Sal is an example. I mean, he, a very young age, he found a, his passion for lifting at 15. Mine was for sports, you know, right. like I had like the lifting in the garage Same with thing. my friends was an afterthought. I was looking to play basketball outside or go hit balls on, on a field. Like that was like what I was doing at that age for sure. And even into my twenties where you know, somebody who might have found bodybuilding at a young age like that, they just never really pursued ath- uh, athletics and they went towards like sculpting their physique more. So. Now, that all being said, if you're looking at the average pop, you know, the, the average person or you're looking at the population and if they if you had to pick something that would benefit their lives, their regular lives more fully than anything else. And, and forget bodybuilding for a second. I'm just going to say resistance training because bodybuilding is very specific. Oh, you could still say bodybuilding because yeah. I would. De- I know where you're going with this argument. Yeah, it's way better than a sport. Oh, yeah, I mean, no. you, you take the average person. You're like, okay, we're going to make you fit. You know, that's the cross. Go play basketball. You know, that's, a big, you know, that's a big CrossFit uh, defense, right? Of so cro- CrossFit always comes back and says, like, when people talk about all the injuries that happen in CrossFit, the, the joke within CrossFit is that you get there's way more injuries in the you know average american that just plays pickup ball it's probably or, true it is you know mm. it's definitely true i mean i being somebody who played pickup ball his whole life it's rare that i would go to the gym and somebody didn't go down with that's an injury that's true that's true because you have a bunch of amateur people that aren't that aren't trained moving explosively yeah moving explosively yeah. i mean i'm shit i fuck that's how i tore my achilles that's yeah. how i tore my acl mcl was playing you know rec league type basketball in in my mid to late 20s so yeah, no, I, I think that that's a it's a common argument or debate that CrossFit will have when somebody yeah, tries to that. point out their in, injuries. So they're like, okay, so you're saying that you know it's it's not safer than you know you know Joe Smo going down to the gym and playing. And I'm like, okay, I, I can see that defense. Next question is from Mofo Lolo. <laughs> Mofo Lolo. What are the best exercises for poor posture, like forward shoulders? Forward shoulder is quickly becoming the. Like a like an epidemic. It's, the it's already been an epidemic. Posture, yeah. And it's the Thanks to the phone. It's the most common posture deviation. There's in, a lot. Seated row is a great one. Yeah. In fact, yeah. when I was when I was a personal trainer, yep. uh, and I haven't trained anybody, you know, like except for like maybe online coaching, I haven't done anything like that for a few years now. I could almost I would I can guarantee you if I'm going to do an assessment on you mm-hmm. that I it was, it was rare to not see this. I would always I mean, it's like I guarantee we're going to see well, especially here, forward here in the Silicon Valley. Yeah. Like think about it for yourself right now. All the assessments you did, how often would you do an assessment on someone and be like, "Oh wow. Yeah. They don't have forward shoulder." No, I've read it. I've talked about this before, maybe not on this podcast, but the, that 
upper cross syndrome is, I think it's like present in 75 or 80% yeah. of the population. So what do they also call kyphosis is another term that, that that's when the lot. low back is also, that's a, and that wasn't, that's kyphotic, an, yeah. that's an, that's an old st- stat that I used to ramble off. So I think it's worse now than ever. I mean, I, I you go outside and find someone without, without it. Yeah. You're, you'll be out there I'm for hours. blown away by what we're seeing right now with, you know, the four, God, I went to the movies last night and I'm walking out of the theater and it was crazy because it was like just a busy time. Katrina and I went around five or so. So it's like six, seven o'clock in the mall, which is crazy time to be in there. And I just don't go there a lot at that time. And as I'm walking out of the mall, you know, there's probably a, a herd of 20 people or so coming from all different angles to walk, funnel into the door. And I'm looking out at everybody who's kind of like walking towards me and I'm dodging people. And every single person. Yep was walking, look, reading their phone while they're walking yeah, into the mall. The forward heads. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. heads heads down, looking down at their hands and texting. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like we, people we have no idea. what shrimp. Yeah, dude, you have dude, no idea what's ahead can, of us in the next 10 years. Your body molds and shapes to what you do the most, okay? And on extreme levels, humans have figured this out and have shaped their bodies in very strange ways. Like, for example, if you look at pictures of the, you know, geisha uh, girls from Japan in the 19th century where they used to bind their feet as they were kids. And what they would do is they take their feet because it was desirable to have these little tiny, tiny feet and they would bind their feet as children. And as they grow, the foot would actually grow underneath itself. Yeah. So you step on top of your toes. Yeah. And it looks like a little hoof. Yeah. You can actually Google pictures of this. It's disgusting. It's and, it's don't do it. Horrific. And, and you can say, Doug's about to do it right now. No, don't, don't do it. And don't you can do see. It. I've seen it. I don't yeah. need to see yeah. it. You know what? Go it's ahead, actually Doug. Chinese, not Chinese. Japanese. I'm sorry, no. sorry, Chinese. Mm. Uh, they also used to, uh, in some cultures, they would bind, they would bind uh, like planks of wood to people's heads or to children's heads to shape the head so that they were elongated, so that they had these long upper. No kind of, way. Yeah, wow. and I forgot what culture it was that did it, but uh, I knew the rings. Yeah, with the, neck. the rings in the neck. Yeah. That's yeah, another, another one where elongating the neck. But the one on the head is funny because you have all these conspiracy theorists who are like. Oh, that that shows proof that the aliens visited and they want to oh, look like right. aliens. Yeah, they're trying to mimic the alien. Yeah. And I'm always overlords. like, how do you know what a fucking alien looks like? Yeah. Like, how do you know that's what they're trying to do? You know, it's so stupid. <laughs> but yeah, you, your body molds and shapes because aliens. Because I what, saw Independence Day. Yeah. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To what you do Ancient the most aliens. of. So the reason why I'm saying that, the reason why I'm trying to make that point is, we're going to go through some exercises. We're going to tell you what you need to do. But here's the key. The key is frequency. Okay, when it comes to to changing a recruitment pattern. Right, right. It's different than trying to build Doing it two times a week in the gym is just not enough. Not if you're trying to correct an issue that you have going on. You have to do it all the time. Yeah, take like, like adamantly take breaks like from sitting at your desk or whatever you're doing at the time. Really present yourself up right you know get your chest up get your shoulders back mm-hmm. you know look up even a lot of times like I'll, I'll check myself to look up and and get my body in full extension because man it just feels great to do that yep do this do this if you have a poor poor posture like forward shoulders well first off here's the issues that it can cause besides looking like it looks it causes neck tension because the upper trapezius muscles uh tr- try to stay tense to stabilize your shoulders so you have neck tension you'll feel tension in your upper back could cause shoulder problems. It's connected to headaches too. Connected to headaches because those muscles in the neck attach at the base of the skull. And when those get tight, it's, it can trigger uh, headaches or migraines. It causes your, your head to go forward. So you get that mm-hmm. kind of weird forward head you know, look that comes along with it. It can cause breathing issues because as the shoulders come forward, you're not able to get a full diaphragmatic breath which then contributes to the feeling of being in a sympathetic state, which feels like anxiety. Right. So I've literally- compiled. And, I, I, and you're talking on all things. Now, I, I, I feel like it's important to even say too, like this is something I used to do with clients just to show, um, especially my female clients, especially if you're curvy and you have shape to you, like bad posture looks so, you got some boobs. so bad. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can take somebody- not lose any weight. Like I used to do this test all the time. Like, you know, I'd stand them in front of the mirror and look at their body and stuff like that. Then I would put them in the correct posture. Like this is what you're supposed to look like. Everybody looks better. Oh, you look like you, you look better than if you lost 15 pounds by standing upright. Somebody that is- Immediately your confidence goes way up. Yes. Not only does it go up because you look different, but it actually goes up because there's this feedback mechanism with your body where Mm -hmm. how you feel- in your mind or emotionally changes your posture, but your posture also sends feedback to the brain that says you should be feeling a yeah, particular way. It's the power pose. Yes, I mean, it yep. literally works. It you know, does. I, I've done it like going into like big meetings. Like I will literally throw my hands up and I'm, I'm in this like the victory, victory pose. position. Yeah. So, you know, what's funny is that um, I remember when I was first starting as a trainer, 
And, you know, I remember learning NASM and the corrective exercise stuff and all the like, you know, quadruped, the prone cobras Mm -hmm. and like all these exercises that I felt were mundane. And I know I didn't put a lot of energy and focus Mm -hmm. on with my clients. You just that, knew you kind of had to do them. Right, yeah. yeah you'd be, oh, you should do this every now and then. Like, I know I was taught to tell you and teach you and stuff like that, but I really didn't. Tr- Looking back now, I look at these are some of the most important things that you can incorporate either into your day or into your routine because yeah, yeah. of what, it, what it's addressing. Like, the prone cobra for the average person that does Amazing it. Amazing exercise. Is, yeah. They look at it and or they even they do it and they're like, okay, you know, whatever. Don't really feel it. But what it's addressing is literally the most common areas that everybody is neglecting. With the Imagine round. if everybody just stopped in the middle of work and did that a few times a day. Oh, hundred percent. It would change the way your day felt. Yeah, you know, from for all the reasons that we just covered. Like, here, here's an easy thing. Here, this is very, very easy. Get yourself good quality resistance bands because they're super easy and convenient. You can mm-hmm. take them anywhere. Do some pull aparts. The company that we we like to work with is Rubber Bandits, and the reason why we work with them is they're. I've worked with bands forever. It's it's part of it's trigger sessions and maps anabolic, and bands snap and they're just whatever. These are really, really quality. So get yourself good quality bands, take them with you to work, and several times a day, okay? And here's the key now. Because you're doing it so frequently, you're trying to change a pattern. You want to do it frequently, but you don't want to go super intense because then you start to tap into recovery ability. So then if you go too intense with lots of frequency, you'll actually cause yourself more problems. So the goal is several times a day, three to four to five times a day Mm -hmm. for a grand total of 30 seconds. Take that band, put it around an anchor point like a door. Uh, in fact, I think the rubber band, it comes with door uh, anchors or whatever. Yep. Stand up real tall. Do a standing row where you focus on, forget the arms. We although do the a arms, whole YouTube video on this. Yeah. Forget the arms. The arms are coming back. Like shoulders are trapped in this row. and you pinching. Squeeze your shoulder blades back and down. Mm-hmm. The down is important too. Don't yep. just bring them back because otherwise you'll just shrug them because you probably have shit. You'll t- notice you want to elevate let's your Let's do shoulders. this video. I think this would be a great YouTube right here, Doug. If we got time after the, after this, I would love to actually do a video because I've been wanting to, remember I told you I've been wanting to do like an iPhone thing. This is like right. the same thing, right? It so it's like, thing. What, I think we did one, didn't we? I think no, we might've done one. No, we have not, not, not specific to that. Like I want to do one that's like addressing iPhone postures. Like I want to call it, or, you know, how do you address the forward shoulders? And I want to do, give some practical exercises like this. Yeah. And, and sh- so they can see, cause here's the thing too. This is what's really important. Okay. Now if you have really excessive forward shoulders, and you go to do a movement like a prone cobra or you do like a seated row, some people, there it, it's so bad because they've been in that position for so long that they can't get connected to the muscles responsible to get them in the proper alignment when they do it. And so they don't really actually help. They just solidify this poor recruitment pattern that they already have. So how you do the movement, you know, how do you do these little prone cobra or quadruped or you do these types of movements? What's oh, up? I did, I did, I did. I'm going to send it to you right now, Adam, so you can do oh, it. Really? Maybe we'll link this in the show notes. Uh, but it's the, the title of it is How to Fix Rounded Shoulders. And the, the, the picture, in fact, is me on my phone with rounded shoulders to kind of show people what that looks like. Oh, when did you do this? I did that with uh, a while ago, like three, four months ago with Taylor. Mm. Specifically, you know, oh. I don't think anybody was in here. It was just me and him. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't even remember yeah. you doing this. We didn't yeah. even notice. Yeah, we should yeah. definitely put How this in the show, show put notes. that in the show notes. We'll send that to to, cool. to Jackie. But yeah, so do grab a band, do some standing rows, pull the shoulders back and down, squeeze real hard, let them roll forward, repeat. Do this for like thirty seconds. You know, every day, four or five times a day, and within a matter of a week, you'll probably notice changes in your posture because you're changing those recruitment patterns. Yeah. And it makes a life-changing difference uh, to do this kind of stuff. It's not about intense workouts when, when, when we're talking about changing patterns. No. In fact, like Adam was saying, if you go too heavy or too hard, your body's going to revert to default. its default pattern and you'll actually strengthen the wrong thing. So make sure you go easy and light and bands are just perfect for this. Next question is from Stellar Hefe. For someone training for an obstacle course race like Spartan, what's the most optimal way to program training for aerobic endurance, strength, and the functional skills required to do these kinds of events? Is it best to focus on one specific type of training per session or incorporate several of or all of these? Do mass so, performance. So this is what, uh, so Katrina races on Saturday. Oh, she's doing another one. Mm-hmm. Her and her brother are doing another. Oh, all, so she got bit by the bug, man. Uh, well, they're trying. To, you know, you know what Spartan does really well. It's so brilliant. So fucking Joe Decina, man. Yeah, I know. Let champion. me tell you, let's, this is so brilliant. Like, so when you do their your race, their race, they have different ones, right? They have a sprint. They have the 
um what's the the big monster the big was monster i think it's i called. don't know it's not monster it's something else though but they have they have like three levels right mm-hmm. and they're as far as how challenging how long they are how many obstacles how many how many miles total and when you go through it you get like this really cool medallion but it's it's a it's a single medallion, but it fits into a bigger medallion if you have all three. So you want to com- mm-hmm. you want to complete the puzzle. so you want to complete the puzzle, dude. And it's a pretty dope piece already as it is by itself, and then together it builds like this super cool medallion, right? Yeah. So of course her brother got that like he got the it. gamification they built. In. Dude, we went, we went out to it. We went out to eat after I went last time. Motherfuckers wearing it inside. Like I think we stopped by. No, internet. he didn't. Yes, dude, he's walking around with it. <laughs> you know, and I totally did not say it, so if. I love you if he's listening to this right now. I'm just teasing, right? Like, you know, but it just shows you the sense of pride that it, it put in. And it's kind of cool, right? So Larry's, you know, my, my brother-in-law is 40 years old. And, you know, he he used to be an athletic guy when he was younger. He's now, he's had a computer. He's a computer guy. And he sits at a computer de- a desk all day long for like 16-hour days some days. And, you know, I, he, there's a part of him that he, the reason why he signed up with Katrina was, to just see if like this is something that he still can do, you know, and just him completing it gave him this like sense of fulfillment, made him feel good. You could see that, then they reward you with medallion, yeah. so you could see the sense of pride in him uh, wearing the, wearing it around That's later awesome. on, you know. So, anyways, back to how I'm helping them. So I'm I'm actually helping both of them train for this and. Justin's right. Maps performance would be a, a great uh, thing to. Oh be. my god! How long is performance? It's like is it 14 or 16 weeks long? It's a four phase. There's, yeah, because there's there's a, a like two week phase where it's like all just devoted purely so to condition. We a, we actually had somebody in our forum that actually did it and they they crushed it. They did better than the previous time, so it works really well with that. Now, I took it to the next level and was really specific because now I've had the opportunity to go to these races. I've seen all the obstacles. Plus, you know them. You get to train them exactly. I know them, and so I'm I'm there. And so what we do is so um, most of the races. You never have more than about a one mile run between each obstacle. So I have them run for a mile and then I have them do a couple drills. So that might be a dead hang that I have them do because there's a lot of that type of stuff where you have to you have to hold your own body weight up or go across monkey bars or climb over something. So having good grip strength and being able to hold their body weight. So we do that. We do some pull up work. We do some like uh, sled dragging because they have to drag some things like that or, or pushing or carrying, so sandbag carries. So there's a lot of, uh, of things like that. And so I typically pick two or three exercises that I incorporate in between each little lap that they run. So they, they go take off and we're running outside because I want them to be used to the impact and running on the ground. It's not a, it's, You could use the treadmill for cardiovascular reasons, but you want to obviously... Uh, emulate what they're doing outside as much as possible. So they're running outside. They do a, they do about a you know three quarter mile to a mile run. Do a couple obstacles. Do it again. Come back. Do a couple obstacles. Do it again. And we continue to increase the amount of volume of one the obstacle stuff that they're doing, and then also mm-hmm. the amount of time that they're taking to get through the the mile or so. And that's kind of how I've progressed uh, Katrina to get ready for that. This is something that. I would love for us to do because I think we have a large yeah. uh, OCR audience that that actually would love some like sp- specific programming. I think in general, I think Maps Performance does a really good job. That if you're following that, you're gonna get the benefits of. Building. Oh yeah, if you're if you're 16 weeks out from a race, first off, you need to do the 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 specific. You're, you're, you need to be smart and train specifically for the obstacles and stuff. Right. Practice because they all require a high level of skill. It's not just about being fit. It's also knowing how to swing across things, climb things. You're going to want to find a gym that has ropes and yeah. You know, the yeah, sandbags, like yeah. you mentioned, to carry and all these types of things. Yeah, so do all that for the specific skill portion of it, but you can do MAPS performance from beginning to end and have the end of it lead you up to your event so you peak for your event and you'll be perfect. Mm-hmm. From a fitness standpoint, you'll be perfect because it's literally designed to address all aspects of athletic performance. That's what, that's the whole thing behind mass performance. It's full spectrum athletic performance. So strength, agility, speed, mobility, you know, having a bigger gas tank. And the way we designed it is that it ends right into a season. Because when we first wrote the program, the goal was like, okay, this should start in the off season, but then it should lead to being in season. So then you're ready for right. your sport 
mass performance is is perfect for this. And Absolutely. then you can introduce like those very specific skills like within the portions on the mobility days as well. So that would oh, be something yeah. I would suggest, you know, if there's like some specific skill like I'm trying to learn how to climb a rope better, I'm trying to, you know, like learn how to manage like a big stone and walk with it, like I would actually like apply that on those days and like really focus in on that. Great and, idea. And and then that way I'm still building and, and applying and, and getting this like general strength overall uh, and then building my skill set as well. Next question is from Mark Kalhoff. Why would I buy map split when up until now I've been told full body three to four days a week is superior? For example, <laughs> anabolic and aesthetic. <laughs> I love that. I love how he's, he's saying jab, that. jab, jab. Right, right, no, right. you know what? This is- I, there's, it's true. And in, Exactly why we we released it the way we did was for this reason because order of priorities. for for eighty percent plus of the population out there a full body you know three to four days a week is superior mm-hmm. because there are very few people I have trained in my life and I believe the boys can will will add to this uh, that can actually work out consistently six to seven days a week for month on, month out, year on, year out. Most people have other lives and other pursuits that they they're, or family and kids and things that get in the way of being able to train six. Most people can do, do sprints of that, right? Mm-hmm. And what we, what we have found that most people have long-term success where they can keep themselves in this shape for a long period of time when you can build and structure a program that is designed that they only need to be in the gym three days a week. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a 20% of the population that are more like probably the three of us who love to be in the gym six, seven days a week and have made it a part of their lifestyle and their career and they're in there all the fucking time. And so there is ways to split the body up and be very beneficial for that that's person. A, that's, the, that's a good point because... Body. Let me tell you why body part splits typically suck. The reason why they typically suck is the programming. It's not that you're breaking up the body. That's not what makes them shitty. It's the fact that most modern body part splits, first off, hit each body part once a week. That is too little frequency right. of training for most people. Most people need two to three days a week of frequency. Two to three being the average, and a lot of that depends on the volume and your independent, you know, genetic, the, the way your body recovers and, and all that stuff, right? But most modern splits work out like this. Monday is chest day. Tuesday is back day. You know, uh, Wednesday is shoulder. They're literally going to the gym hitting one body part, and that's it for the entire week for that body part. That's just not going to work for most people. You need more frequency. In fact, the original body part splits that Arnold and Franco and all those guys did, Still train the whole body two to three days a week. Yeah. It's it just it just devolved into this. And the reason why it devolved that way is because bodybuilders are on a shit ton of steroids. Mm-hmm. They don't need to train that frequently. They can hammer a body part once a week, and their anabolic signal stays elevated all the time. Because, somehow they can still walk the next yeah, day. Yeah, they're on tons and tons of gear. So not that's to number- not to mention too that the the training the six days a week you know, split type of routine is more volume than, again, 80 to 90% of the population needs when they first... Most people that are listening to this podcast right now are coming on or off the wagon. You know, they were consistent for the last six months or year. Oh, they got busy, work, family, travel, whatever the fucking excuse is, and they're getting back in the gym. They have no business going right to a big split routine that's six, seven days a week. But somehow they get this, like, impression or this idea they need to be doing what their hero is doing on Instagram. Right. Well, that's what's what's marketed to them right now. Yeah. Like, you have to be doing this because, you know, Jay Cutler is is doing this every single day, and this is how it works. Right. And you're not Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler has been doing that for the last 20 yeah, like years forever consistently and has built up that his body can handle that much volume and or he's that a it genetic ne- freak right that it needs that much volume yep. to maintain that mass and he's on gear and right. he's on you know that's that's his job here's but, here's the other thing body part splits modern ones they never phase or periodize there's no periodization in bodybuilding split routines ever yeah. it's literally hit one body part a day go to the gym eight to twelve reps Change your exercises every once in a while. Do that uh, forever. Yeah. And the it's bo- all about the supplements. You know, so that's you know, be the edge. You know what's funny? I don't know any other resistance training modality besides the typical modern bodybuilding type modality that doesn't periodize their training. Olympic lifters do it. Mm-hmm. Power lifters do it. Kettlebell athletes do it. People that work out with clubs and, and maces do it. 
The reason why they all do it is because the body, per, first off, they measure their their results by their performance. Yeah. Bodybuilders Tangible measure their metrics. Yeah, bodybuilders measure by aesthetics. Well, I cannot progress in the gym at all with my with with my workout and just change my diet and it looks like I'm progressing, which is what a lot of bodybuilders do. Or I can manipulate my water and my carbs, or I can manipulate my drugs. Now, performance athletes, they can do that as well, but you're not going to get your squat up 50 to 60 pounds just by doing those things. You have to have really smart programming. In fact, if you look at the typical you know, dumb, and I say dumb not because people are dumb, but dumb in the sense that there's not a lot of programming involved. You look at the typical dumb body part split routine, look at it in front of you, and compare that to the typical powerlifting routine that's accepted that people will use, like Smolov or some other. You know, look at the difference. Five, yeah. You're going to look at the, the powerlifting routine is going to have percentages of Very maxes. Specific, yeah. It's going to have periodization. Here's where you go max effort. Here's where you go light effort. Here's where, Because that's what works on the body. So that's another reason why splits tend to be shitty. They don't do that. Well, so what we did, and by the way, this entire time that we haven't written a split, this entire time that we've written full body routines, we've been getting pestered by people. We want to split. We want to split. And we knew mm -hmm. at some point we would write a split, but it just wasn't time. Right. But we knew when we write it, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to make sure you get the right frequency, the right intensity. We, we're going to program it right. We're going we're gonna to phase and it. And we really took it on as a challenge. That's it. Well, yeah. and then we're also going to present it as not the ideal place to start. So if yeah. you're somebody who has MAPS Anabolic and you've followed it, and then you follow MAPS Aesthetic, and you also are open to going to the gym six days a week, I highly recommend Split to you. Oh, yeah. I think you'll love the fuck out of it, and you'll see great, You're gonna because it's added volume. It's de You're definitely going to see change and progression. Now, do you think you can maintain six days a week and continue doing that, that much volume? I don't know. You know that answer. And we know that a majority of people, the answer is really no, which is right. why we waited to put it out this long. It's not yeah. us changing our tune from, oh, full body is superior to now saying like, oh, hey, split is superior. No, this isn't like a fucking sales pitch. It's there are some people that this is going to benefit. There are some people that are at this level and could use this. And it is, like Sal said, something that people have been begging for for like the last two years from us. So here it is now. And That's here's it. how we recommend that you use here, it. We don't recommend it for Here's everybody. the ultimate bodybuilding training cycle. Ultimate. Start with anabolic. Go to aesthetic. Go to split. Start the cycle over. Okay. If your goal is only bodybuilding... If that's all you're looking for, literally, if in, in, uh, now we always recommend that you individualize your training, especially if you, once you've done the program once, that you start to individualize it. Because at the end of the day, we're great trainers, but we're not training you individually. We're, we're writing programs for everybody. So when you, when you start to learn about your body, make sure you individualize it. But if you want to just follow the directions, here's what you do. Anabolic, aesthetic, split, rinse and repeat. Anabolic. Yeah aesthetic split watch what happens to your body because you can go from low volume heavy strength higher volume more bodybuilding focused to straight bodybuilding focused start over that cycle again that is like a that is an infinite cycle of progress and i think if your diet's good you will probably reach your genetic potential faster following a cycle like that than anything that i can think I of agree. i love it too because it highlights like how we approach things like it's we're not we're not married to an idea no. You know, like we're we're challenging ourselves to like like find the truth in in multiple different pursuits, and so I think that you know I love questions like these because it feels like people are like, no, well I put you in this category, right, right, and then it's like, no, 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 you know, yes, we do feel strongly that you know it's superior for most people, but guess what, you know, we're going to challenge your ideas in all kinds of different directions. Right. Excellent. Next question is from Fay Bird twenty three. Would Personal training be a wise career choice for an introvert? No. <laughs> well, let's ask Justin. Are you, well, <laughs> I'm not an introvert. Just, you're actually, you're, you're just, not. What's hilarious is that people think that just because I get uncomfortable when it, when it's like all the attention. I don't me. think that people think you're an introvert. Some people say that. You really? know what? You I'm know what? Definitely not. You know, I've never heard anybody say that. You know what's true uh, some about this? Have told me that. You know oh, really? Yeah. I think there's a little bit of a contrast because when we're talking, he's with me and you who are. If we're in front of mic or camera, we're super. Here's the thing about introvert yeah, extrovert. We're needy little bitches. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You guys talk a lot. Right. You know, I don't, people, people don't realize that. You know, like like getting a fucking word in edgewise has taken me three years. Are you, you know just, what I'm saying? How do you not go crazy with a couple of big mouths like us? Oh, I love it. See, that's the thing too. I love good conversation. I love listening too. So it's not like 
I'm not scared to talk. It's just like I, I get enthralled. I get like into what we're talking about. Dude, I don't it's have why to the, fucking talk. It's why this works. Yeah. I mean, the, I see people that are trying to build something similar with three hosts, and it's I what I see them failing miserably at is that it's really tough to. You need find. to have a Justin. You do. You, you, you <laughs> do. You got to have somebody who doesn't soften give, it up a little. Right. Bit. They don't yeah. care about talking that much. It's not. It's not their thing. They they have something to add when they want to add it, but for the most part, it's not a need for you to be in there and interject all the time. So no. yeah. I, here's the thing with introvert extrovert that I learned uh, a while ago, not too long ago, but a while ago. Depending on the situation, first of all, it's very rare to find a pure extrovert and a pure introvert. For right. the most part, True. it depends on the situation. For I'll use me as an example. If I'm on the microphone and I'm doing a, a podcast, if I'm in a small group of, let's say, five to ten people, if I'm in front of a camera, I'm a extrovert. I'm as extroverted as it gets. You put me in a super large group or if we're going to a party where we need to mingle and I don't know anybody, I need to be with an opener. Like I need to go with someone like Adam who Adam in those situations is a pure extrovert. Like we go to a big party – I know Adam's going to break the ice and then I'll come in and do my little, you know, my work when I get a little bit more extroverted. But mm-hmm. that whole breaking the ice thing, that's not my thing. That's when I become introverted. Yeah. So it, it depends what you mean by an introvert. Like right. if you're a pure introvert, you probably don't want to work with people at all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know? no totally. Yeah, be an engineer or something where you could just like type away at shit all day and like not, you know, answer to everybody every single day. Yeah. It's, you have to be able to have like some form of communication skills and interaction with people. This is part of the process. You're trying to help other people. So. Well, that's such a good point because yeah. I think that a lot of people think they're an introvert because they're scared to put themselves out there and that's different. Like, so if you're it like social different. with your friends and you're outgoing and you're mm-hmm. playful and you're loud and you have a great time and like you're a people person, but then, you know, you're, you're comparing yourself to maybe some YouTube stars or even like use us as an example. You see what we've done in fitness and you're like, oh, I don't know if I could get on a mic yeah. and talk. And I don't know if I, if you're comparing yourself to others that you see doing that, well then, yeah, you know, that's totally different than you being a true introvert where you don't like being around lots of people. Yeah, and you don't- I think you're, you're absolutely right with there's varying, varying degrees of it. And I, and I think that like, like situationally, like there'll be times where I pull back, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not like going to be all out in the front for this, you know, type of environment in this situation. But there is, you know, times where it's like, okay, I'm going to be out there in front of everybody. I'm going to entertain everybody. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to talk to, you know, whoever and like lighten it up. And, um, so it's just, it's a matter of like finding your strengths and then like using that and channeling that when you go into your, your, your craft, your job, whether it's personal training. Um, so that, that was something that I connect with people in a different way that you guys each connect with them. Mm-hmm. And that's something you find within yourself. Oh, it's funny. Put us on a stage and watch Justin become an extrovert. A hundred percent. Put right. us on a stage yeah. and that dude all of a sudden becomes like super extroverted. It's different from personal. I've had it's trainers. Different. I've had trainers who are very, very successful, who were more introverted than other trainers who are also very successful, who are more extroverted. Both very different. That's why I said Justin. I didn't say I didn't call your name because I think you're introverted. Yeah. I used you as an example because you're a good example of a trainer who was a well, top producer. Let's, let's talk numbers right away. Okay. So first, the reason why I spout out right away that no is just because the odds are greatly against you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eighty to eighty. It's an eighty twenty rule already with training. So eighty percent of the people are making only twenty percent of the money, and twenty percent of the people are making eighty percent of the money in this space as it is. It's definitely. It's there's not an even split here at all. Like, it's very tough to be successful in it. It's not a super lucrative business as it is, right? So it's already challenging to make a lot of money doing as it is. And then on top of that, if you add that you're an introverted person, you're only making it more challenging. Now, does that mean there's not a very successful introverted trainer? No, not at all. In fact, we've met YouTube celebrities that you think are extroverted and that are making millions of dollars on social media and shit like that. And they are introverted very much so, but because they can perform on YouTube, they actually have learned a way to build a very successful business in fitness because of that. So mm-hmm. if you have a strength that you can play to, like Justin was saying, that, for example, I think there's room for somebody who's brilliant and that can program really well or is really, really understands nutrition or has worked with so many people and helped so many people nutritionally or these things, you have something to really contribute that separates you from the extroverts that are into fitness, well, then you now have an edge. You have an advantage and you can play into that and you have an opportunity to be successful. But I'll tell you right now, 
the odds are against anybody, first of all, even wanting to get into fitness. It's not an easy space to be successful. And then if you're also going to be introverted, it would be, you know, really just, it's just like, I would say the same thing too, to someone coming into the space who's fat. Sorry, but we're in a very superficial space. And even if you're the br- most brilliant person, you're you're getting into you're you're adding something to, or you have something. You're that, adding another barrier. Yeah, just dis- you ha- you're adding a disadvantage to being successful in a space that that would be. But does that mean that uh, a fat person can't be a health and wellness professional that makes lots of money? No, they're, they're, they exist. They're out there, but it's going to be that much more challenging for you because it's a very superficial space. Same thing goes for being an introvert. Doesn't mean you have to be. It just means that. A lot of people that are into this are into people, like Sal said, and a mm-hmm. people person. That's really going to help when you're working yeah. with thousands of people. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, my uh, <laughs> part, part of it. You know, it's a good example. Jessica is a great example of that. If you put Jessica in a crowd or in a, with a lot of people, she's very she can be very shy and very introverted. But on a one on one basis, mm-hmm. she's extroverted. One on one, she she flourishes. Now she's a personal trainer. She's extremely successful. She has her own. You know, she runs her own business doing it. She likes working in a private studio because that's where she flourishes because it's a smaller environment, smaller group. It's more of that high quality person to person type of interaction. She does very well. But if you're a pure introvert where you really don't like working with people, you're not really, you consider yourself not a people person then why would you want to work with people? Because that's what personal trading is. <laughs> that's got to be the worst. You know, maybe, like, maybe write blogs. Maybe write fitness blogs like, or something ah! like that. Yeah, right. it doesn't make yeah. any sense to right. me. So. No. There you go. No, stick with computers. Yeah. Check this out. Uh, we all have Instagram pages. You can find us. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam's at Mind Pump Adam. Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. Also, we have free guides. I don't know if uh, a lot of people don't know this. You can get a bunch of our free guides like Flabby Arm Guide, Flat Tummy Guide, how to maximize your high inter- high intensity interval training guide. You can find those at where do we find where do we send people to those Doug? Mind, Mind Pump, Pump Free. free. Mindpumpfree.com. Go get your free guides. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic. MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.